Hi everyone and welcome to Asami Rat Care. Now today I'm going to do a video that is somewhat overdue, which is all about castration. And for this, in the starring role, we have Burko, who is my um, castrated book. Um, cast this, this video very much what wants to look at why we castrate, as well as some of the kind of practicalities that you need to think about should you decide to get your um, book castrated. So castration, if you're not familiar with the term, is basically the surgical neutering, or it's usually surgical neutering of a book, okay, removing of the testicles, which is why Burko's a little lacking in that department. Um, we do it for a number of reasons. Um, some of them are good, and some of them are reasons that I would actually not ever castrate a male for. So some of the reasons that you hear people castrating for, which actually don't really make much difference, are things like um, they think that if you don't castrate a male, they will never live with other rats. Now, there are some males that need castration to live with other rats, but there are many that live perfectly happily. Um, there's a rumour that goes around that says that unrelated males can't live together. That's false. Um, the majority of them can if you introduce them in the right way. Um, but it is true that some rats do need castration to get on with other rats, but we'll go on to that one later. Um, another reason I hear banded around sometimes is... Um, it stops rats marking on you and that's um there's there's a little bit of basis in it that in that um a rat who is generally less dominant is less likely to mark um it, to a substantial amount however it doesn't stop marking in the majority of cases um the rats will still quite often mark even castrated burko still marks don't you he doesn't mark as much but he's also a lot less kind of high ranking than he was um, and I'll be entirely honest, if you're going to be bothered by a rat marking on you, don't own rats. Um, they're going to do a lot worse than mark on you at some point. And um, marking is kind of part and parcel of being an owner, just put an old jumper on. It's a lot cheaper and a lot nicer for the rats um, to be able to have something like that. So some of the more kind of acceptable reasons to um, castrate a rat is when you've got a rat that's um, clearly suffering from kind of hormonal imbalances and, and this does happen even in well-bred rats though it is more common in rats that are not bred from a temperament point of view um, that might be a rat that um, constantly feels tense in fact you can usually feel it in the muscles Burko was very like that in the early days and um, if you want to see him um, when I first got him here look at my socialization series and my assessment video and you'll see there's a completely different rat that's sitting on here, me here today um, he was very tense, he was very stressed by the situation and also more importantly because you can quite often get through to a tense rat just from kind of handling socialisation etc. Um, he'd proven despite several different groups and numbers of boys that he was not able to live with other books. He got very very stressed and um, would kind of lash out which is the reason he's got a very stylish um, split ear which I don't know if you can see there. Um, he picked a fight with the wrong book. Well, the wrong book got re revenged, didn't he? But yes, um, so Burko was primarily castrated because he couldn't get on with other rats. And this was after we tried a few things. Um, castration is a surgical procedure. And one thing you do need to be aware of with surgical procedures is it carries risk. You're basically putting a rat under anaesthetic and there are different ways to put them under anaesthetic. Some of them are generally safer than others. If you can find somewhere that uses gaseous anaesthetic, it's very good. Um, um, and sometimes you can kind of reduce the risks that way. Um, so yes, so one of the ways we do, one of the reasons, sorry, we do castration is from a hormonal point of view, help them settle down, help them get over um, hormonal imbalance. And generally you might give them a little bit of time to get over it themselves, or you might decide that it's kind of just too much for them. Um, another reason that people sometimes castrate, which is somewhere between the two, so somewhere between um, uh, definitely do this because it's in the best interest of the rats and, and, and I'm just doing this because um, it's in my best interest, is some people choose to castrate so rats can live with does. And to be fair, Burko here lives, lives very happily with my bunch of does, but when you castrate a book, like I say, there is risks. So you need to be very sure that it's in their best interests and also that you're making it as safe as possible for them. Now, there are some long-term health benefits of castration, and this is another reason some people choose to do it. Um, they're not as obvious as a spay. A spay offers a lot more in terms of redu reduction of mammary tumours, that kind of thing. Um, castration does remove the chance of testicular tumours, but to be honest, testicular cancer and tumours are very kind of um, unlikely, I would say. But one thing that is true, if you look at scientific studies, is castration 
does usually extend um, a book's lifespan. It's not by much, it's usually by um, a couple of months, say, something like that. Um, and it does matter, uh, it makes more effect the earlier they have it done. Um, but it does extend the lifespan and that's because testosterone causes a lot of tension generally. Um, stress puts kind of loading on the different organs and so on. Um, and it, you can actually feel the difference when you castrate a book that is full of testosterone, how much they relax. Um, you just feel it in the muscles as they're going around. They behave differently. They respond differently to stresses and um, so on. Um, so it does actually extend lifespan um, and testosterone does have effects on things like kidney issues, etc. Um, ouch, you have stubby nails, Berko. Yes, you do. Um, but it also does help um, a rat relax and that's not every book. Um, some people think castrating makes a book automatically cuddly. Um, I can assure you, despite evidence to the contrary, currently Berko is not a, um, a kind of cuddly rat even now. He's doing a little bit now because I'm, I'm not giving him loads of options to go elsewhere at the moment. But when he's out free ranging, he's pinging around like a nutter with the rest of the girls. Um, he's just showing off for the camera now, aren't you? He's showing up to your public. Yes, you are. Good boy. Um, ignore the girls. They've just moved up into a bigger cage and are having disagreements over it. Um, but yes, so thinking about the kind of health side of things, the lifespan side of things, and the ability to live with girls, um, you may choose to electively castrate. So there's two kind of main types of castration. There's castration for health or temperament reasons, and then there's electively. So electively means that you're choosing to castrate without a kind of definite urgent reason to do so. Um, and I do count temperament castrations as an urgent reason. You know, if they're really not struggling to live with other rats, that is important. That is effectively a health issue for me. Um, but yes, yeah, so elective castration you would choose to do to perhaps actually reduce the chance of health issues in later life, give them a long, longer lifespan, a less stressful lifespan, let them with, live with girls. If you do that, you need to think a bit about the age of the book involved, because testosterone, whilst it does kind of cause stress and such, and um, kind of affect their life, it also helps them build muscle. So if you want, you want your young book to kind of grow into a nice big solid rat, um, he needs testosterone to do that to a degree. Um, so if you can give him a bit of time, and usually you'd say around about six months isn't a bad age, not only is the rat involved like a decent solid size so they can take the anaesthetic better, they've also had time to put on a bit of that muscle, which will be useful for them uh, once they are castrated. Um, so that's not a bad time. If you're thinking about electively castration, th castrating, think about them. Um, if you th if you have to do it for, for a, from a kind of health or hormonal point of view, um, you do it when the rat needs it, even if it's quite young. Though it might be that you try other things first, like introduction methods and such, to help them get on with others beforehand. Because ultimately, we'd all like to avoid putting our rats through surgery if we can help it. So you've decided to castrate. So what are the options for that? There is the straightforward surgical route, which is what Berko had done. Um, the vet basically makes a small incision in the um, testicular sac and then takes the two testicles out. And importantly in rats, which isn't the same for other animals, and this is why you need a vet that knows what they're doing, they have to sew up. They've got a couple of little canals along here, which is how rats retract the testicles when they're younger. Um, and those need to be sewn up, otherwise infection can track up into the body, which isn't fun, is it? Um, so you do need a vet that knows what they're doing. Um, you need a vet that's not going to cause butchering <laughs> so that they're relatively neat. Um, some are neater than others. I will pop up a picture of a really neat example here, um, which is what my local vet does. And she's um, she is brilliant. Um, she's the one that is you, didn't she? Um, but it is, you'll find that the kind of cut make, is made in different places depending on the vet's preference. Ideally, it should only be a single cut for each testicle. I've seen one where they cut a, a large kind of door out of the testicles and that took ages to heal. It was really messy. It was a really bad job. So um, the vet shouldn't cut too much. Um, you don't need a large hole to get the testicles out, um, apparently. So yes, yeah, so that's what to bear in mind. Try and also go for a vet that uses um, gas anaesthetic. So iso or servofluorin are both um, great. Some vets may use ketamine, which is, which is an injectable. Now, in theory, this should be fine to use on rats, and some vets use it very competently. And actually, I've, I still do sometimes have to have rats um, kind of injected just because, let's say, it's a facial abscess or such, where they'll struggle to get gas in any other way. Um, 
but it is a higher risk. They do seem to kind of lose temperature very easily, go in too deep. Um, when I've had surgical problems, it's generally been under a ketamine anaesthetic. Um, and that's even with the vet kind of really knowing what they're doing. It, it, is, it is a risky um, kind of means of surgery. So if you can get gas anaesthetic, go for gas anaesthetic. Um, other things to think about is um, make sure they kind of sew things upright, um, give appropriate pain medication afterwards, keep an eye on them afterwards. Some rats do like to um, chew themselves after surgery, particularly if they've had an opioid painkiller. It makes them a little bit stoned um, and it is quite amusing. Where are you off to, Burke? Um, but it's not so amusing when you come in and you find your rat with some of it itself in its mouth, which I have done. Um, so what you can, can do for that situation, if you've got a rat that's very interested in the wound, is to wrap them. Um, if you watch my video on wrapping, that shows you how to do it. It's a bit easier in a book, actually, because they're a bit bulkier um, than it is in a dough. Um, so that's kind of from the surgical point of view. What you can also do is there's um, two kind of chemical methods. So there's something called TARDAC, which is a chemical injection. It goes to work straight away and um, it's basically sorts out the hormones for around about four to six weeks so it's a short term thing but it's quite useful if you've got a book that's just acting up out unusually and you want to see whether um, he'll settle down over time but he's too bad to leave as he is so you can try that um, but again it does run out over time um, I should say in terms of surgical castration it can take four to six weeks for surgical castration to actually see the hormones drop and actually when you do you can feel it in the coat. Burko's lovely and soft now, aren't you? You're not like a normal book. book. Um, he also smells slightly different. He's not as booky smelling as the um, as kind of an entire book. Um, and that can happen fairly quickly. Um, take a few weeks until you see it, but then four to six weeks and, and the kind of hormones should be low enough that they can be introduced to other rats and such. Um, sometimes you can go a little bit earlier. Burko was in with Tato about two weeks, or less than two weeks after his operation. Um, but that's not true for every rat. Four to six weeks is a kind of good rule of thumb. But what you can do is you've castrated the rat. You can give a TARDAC injection at that point. It will then immediately start working. And then as the TARDAC injection is running out from its effects, the castration is actually kicking in. So in combination, they can work quite well. Um, the other option is another chemical method, which is an implant. So it's a little kind of tiny little, kind of, imagine a grain of rice size thing that is injected under the skin and then it gives off hormones over a certain period of time. I think supralorin is um, the implant and you want the bigger of the two implants because rats have a remarkably fast metabolism and it can run out quite fast. Um, it's worth saying with the implants, there is not tons of evidence, and when I say evidence, I mean scientific studies that show it working on books in terms of temperament um, and that side of things. And there is definitely no evidence that I've seen um, that shows from a fertility point of view. So I would not use an implant and then put a book in with those. Um, but you can use an implant on a book that's going to live with other books in the theory that it will help kind of die down their hormones and they'll be able to live with them. However, from circumstantial evidence, so from people that I know that have done this, they find that typically after the first, well, the first week or two, they can actually have a hormone surge. So they can actually get more grumpy and angry and stressed for that short period of time and then gradually it will die off again. So what you may find in that kind of situation is you have to keep that book or books separate for a few weeks until they kind of properly calm down, then introduce them back to their friends. And at that point, you, you'll actually notice that the testicles quite often shrivel. Um, the coat goes nice and soft like a neutered book for quite a while, actually. Um, it does noticeably affect them. And um, it's something that you kind of see fairly quickly. Um, so that is an option. What I will say with the implant is there's also no real studies into its long term health impacts. You're messing with hormones. Um, I suppose you are when you're castrating them as well. But I don't think we fully understand yet what happens. And I do know some people that have had, had issues that may be entirely unrelated. Um, but for me, if I've got a book that can be castrated, particularly because I've got a vet who's excellent and I trust a lot with um, kind of castration operations, I will always get the book castrated first. If for some reason I can't castrate him, like um, there was a book that um, I knew that had clotting problems, um, he was not a surgical candidate, so they put the implant in and actually that did him wonders, it really helped. And that was great because you, I would, well, I would have, his, his owner at the time would have risked his life putting him through surgery and this way he kind of had the benefits without the effects. And if it did affect his life long term, 
um, then it's one of those that it was better than him living alone or biting other rats and so on. So um, implant is one to consider if you want to do it. It's um, it's it's a definitely an option. It's not a bad option. Some people have great luck with it. Um, I personally favour castration, but it's one for you to make your own mind up on this. Um, and again, Tardac is very useful if you want to do something in the short term. So those are the th kind of three main options. Um, now, as you can see, castration or kind of neutering of sorts is, is a very useful tool. So it can really help a rat that is tense, struggles to live with other rats, um, that's hormonally aggressive to you. So you might find that you've got a young buck and I should say they typically tend to get hormonally aggressive around about six to 12 months, I would say. But what you can also find is you have a really kind of strong dominant rat in your group and they die and all of a sudden you can have rats that are much older suddenly get a hormonal surge out of the blue um, because a kind of good dominant rat actually his levels of testosterone suppress the levels of testosterone in the other animals in the group um, so you can see stuff then as well um, it can be useful to help rats live with other rats but you do have to think carefully about whether it's beneficial to them to do that um, you shouldn't just do things for convenience but there is evidence that it will help in terms of um, kind of lengthening lifespan and reducing the chances of some health issues and removing the chance of testicular cancer as rare as that might be and i should say whilst i say it's rare i have had one case um, it was fine it doesn't tend to cause major issues that rat was castrated um, but he was like two years old at the time um, but he did very well and lived for quite a while afterwards um, but testicular cancer isn't i think in itself a reason to castrate because it really isn't that common unless your rat actually has it so prevention it's it's not something that you really need to think about as an owner however if a rat does show signs of kind of being hormonal being stressed um kind of biting you or other rats on a regular basis then it's seriously something to consider because um, not only are you helping fix that problem, but actually you're probably going to help them live a little bit longer, assuming that you pick the right vet to do the operation. Um, and basically, it's it's quite often in the best interest of the rat. I mean, you can see from Burko here, who was a tense, stressed rat that basically humans couldn't do much with. And a lot of this is kind of handling as well, but the castration has helped. It's taken away one of his stresses, which was making him struggle to settle. And more importantly, he's meant that he can live with other rats. And um, I think what I say in one of the socialisation videos with Burko is probably the single biggest thing you can do to help socialise a rat is help it live with other rats that will show it how good humans are. And it's definitely worked with Burko. I wouldn't say he's the kind of most effusive and excited to see me out of all my rats, but we get on really well now. And he's a much happier boy than he was when he first came here. And he loves his girls and I love him. And you put up with me, don't you, mister? I'm a bit annoying and I insist you sit here and have a bit of scritch now and again. But yes, anyway, me and Burko best go so he can have a run around um, and do all the things he wants to do. Um, as you can probably tell, he's um, he's not the one for sitting still. He's not a lap rat. Um, some people think castration turns books into lap rats. It's turned him into a playful little baby who likes bounding around and actually... That's nice because that's who Burko is really underneath it all. Um, he just couldn't couldn't show it before because he was in a tense bag of hormones. Right, over and out from me. And if you've got any questions, let me know. Um, either in questions on the YouTube channel or over at my Facebook page, um, which can, I can be a bit faster at um, responding to. Or um, my Instagram account, which I'm slower <laughs> at responding to. So I do apologise on that one. So bye for now.